Hello, it's April from April's Home, and today I'm going to be sharing with you four different tater tot casseroles, three different dinnertime tater tot casseroles, as well as a breakfast tater tot casserole. There are a lot of wonderful tater tot casserole recipes, so I thought I would share all four of these with you starting today with classic tater tot casserole. This is the way that I normally make tater tot casserole. I used to make tater tot casserole with no veggies and do veggies on the side, but last year I started making it with veggies added and I like it much better. So that is the first recipe that I'll be sharing today, classic tater tot casserole. So for classic tater tot casserole, you will need a bag of tater tots. You'll need between one and two pounds of hamburger. I have a big pack of hamburger here. And I'll be cooking all of this up for two of the tater tot casseroles that we're going to be making. And I'll set aside half of this for the next tater tot casserole I'll share. But for this recipe, again, you'll need about a pound and a half to two pounds for an average size tater tot casserole recipe that I'll be making in a nine by 13 pan. This recipe is also really easy to increase for a larger family gathering. When I'm making this for a, a much larger group of people I would probably make this whole entire pack of hamburger I'd have to have a bigger bag of tater tots and I'd use one of my bigger casserole dishes and I would just increase all of the ingredients but today I'm making a standard size 9 by 13 tater tot casserole so of course you'll need a 9 by 13 casserole dish that we will go ahead and spray with pan spray and we'll go ahead and preheat our oven to 425 degrees you'll need your tater tots your hamburger you'll also need some garlic powder some pepper a can of cream of mushroom soup I've chosen the heart healthy one here today but normally I just make it with regular Campbell's cream of mushroom soup you will need some chopped um, minced onion here. I'm nearly running out there, but I think I'll have enough for this recipe. Um, some sour cream, about a quarter of a cup of sour cream. I'll let you know as we're making it. Some milk, a bag of frozen peas and carrots, as well as about a cup or two of shredded cheese. I like the Cheddar Jack cheese. It goes with so many different recipes that as long as I have that in my fridge, I know I can make just about any casserole. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is start browning up this hamburger and I'll add some minced onions to that and get that all browned up. So I have my hamburger in the pan cooking away. Of course, like I said, this is a bigger pack because I'm making enough for this tater tot casserole as well as the next one that I'll be sharing with you. But normally you'd be cooking up about a pound and a half of hamburger and adding to that about a rounded teaspoon of the minced dried onion. I'm gonna be adding double that because of course we're doubling the meat here. So I'm gonna just stir this together and brown this up. Then I'm gonna drain off any excess fat and we'll be ready to mix in the rest of the ingredients. My hamburger is all cooked up now and drained and I have reserved half of this uh, hamburger for my next recipe. So what we have left here is about a pound and a half of ground cooked and drained hamburger seasoned of course with the minced onion that we added. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add my can of cream of mushroom soup. Okay, so my cream of mushroom soup has been added and now I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of garlic powder and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. I don't want a ton of garlic in there. Normally I would just shake in a, a little bit, but just for the sake of measuring, I thought I would go ahead and add half a teaspoon of garlic powder and of course half a teaspoon of black pepper. And next we're gonna go ahead and add some milk and sour cream. Next we'll add a half a cup of milk. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stir this together and then I'll add some sour cream and our veggies. Next I've got here a little bit of sour cream. It's a little less than a half a cup, perhaps about a third cup. Again, normally I just eye it, but about that. We'll see what this tastes like when I get it all mixed up. I love to add the sour cream. It gives it a, a wonderful little bit of tanginess um, and richness to this uh, tater tot casserole. Okay, so I've tasted it and that sour cream, the about a third cup of sour cream was perfect. Tastes delicious so far. And next we're going to be adding our peas and carrots. These are just frozen peas and carrots. This is a 10 ounce bag. And with all of these ingredients, you can add a little bit more or less. Same with the spices, just to your taste and to your liking. But I'm gonna go ahead and add in this 10 ounce bag. Then I'm gonna get this stirred up and see if it needs another splash of milk or not. So we've got the veggies all mixed in and I'm gonna give it just another little splash of milk here just to help the cheese melt and for all the casserole ingredients to come together. You can see that the uh, 
little splash of milk there mixed right in. So now I'm transferring this to a 9 by 13 glass baking pan that I have sprayed with a little bit of uh, pan spray. Any 9 by 13 casserole dish will do just fine. So I have the meat mixture transferred to my 9 by 13 sprayed casserole dish and now I'm going to go ahead and top it with about a cup or a cup and a half of grated cheddar jack cheese. And with the cheese I just kind of eye it. I don't want too much cheese but I like to have a nice cheesy layer in between the meat mixture and the tater tots. And you want a nice thin evened out layer here. So let's kind of move it around to evenly distribute it. Maybe add in a little more here and there. Okay, so our casserole is topped with cheese and now it's time to add our tater tots. So I have a 28 ounce bag of tater tots. Uh, this time I'm using extra crispy tater tots, but normally I just use regular tater tots. Any tater tots will do just fine. I like to do mine in a nice even layer. So now I'll go ahead and top my casserole with my tater tots. Okay, so our tater tot casserole is all topped here with tater tots. I've used up nearly the whole bag. There are a few left in there, but not very many. I've gone ahead and pressed down a little bit just to make sure that it is even, um, that the casserole is even. And now it's all ready to go in my 425 degree preheated oven for about 25 to 30 minutes until the tater tots are fully cooked and the casserole, the meat mixture is nice and bubbly hot. So I'll let you know how long it takes in my oven. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get this in the oven and I'll come back when it's all done and I'll give this casserole a try. My tater tot casserole is out of the oven. It cooked for about 25 to 30 minutes. I think it was closer to 30 minutes just to make sure that those tater tots were completely cooked through. I'm gonna let this cool down for just a little while, then I'll go ahead and serve it up and give it a try. So this casserole is piping hot. I've gone ahead and served up a small little scoop here off to the side just so I can taste it right now. Then I'll go ahead and get it served up for dinner with a nice side salad. So now I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try. You can see how that filling looks, really yummy with those veggies. Okay. And that turned out delicious. I'm excited to have this for dinner tonight. This is a classic comfort food, classic tater tot casserole recipe, and I know we're definitely going to enjoy this. So now I'll go ahead and get this served up with a side salad. Here I have my tater tot casserole all served up just with a really simple garden salad here on the side with a little bit of blue cheese dressing, one of my favorites and a nice serving of tater tot casserole. So that is our dinner tonight and the first of our four tater tot casseroles. This was my original tater tot casserole. Up next, we'll be making a taco tater tot casserole. Tonight, we will be making our second tater tot casserole and this is a taco tater tot casserole. I'm going to be using the hamburger that I cooked up in the last recipe. This was about a pound and a half of hamburger cooked up with about a rounded teaspoon of dried minced onion. So I'm going to go ahead now and put this in a pan here and start warming it back up. And I'm going to be adding this mild taco seasoning along with the um, three quarters cup of water that it calls for just to get this meat turned into some taco meat. I like to use the mild taco meat just so it's not too overpowering and too spicy. Of course, you can use regular if you like. Okay, so I have added my mild taco seasoning packet and I'm adding a three quarters cup of water. I'm just gonna stir that around and let that heat up. And in the meantime, I'll share with you the rest of the ingredients here. We'll need some cheese, some salsa, probably like a quarter cup to a half cup of salsa. I may need to get out another jar. Some sour cream. A can of black beans that um, I'm going to drain and rinse. And a can of corn that I'm going to drain. And I'm using a green enchilada sauce. You can use red if you prefer a tangier red enchilada sauce. I really prefer green. It makes it just a little bit more mild. And so this is the one I'm going to use. This is not quite the extra large can. This is a 19 ounce can and then you'll need some tater tots and a 9 by 13 baking pan sprayed with pan spray and you will preheat your oven to 425. My taco meat is heating up nicely and I have drained and rinsed my can of black beans and I'm adding that. That was a 15 ounce can of black beans. And next I'm going to drain and add my corn. Okay, and here is that can of corn. 
I'm going to go ahead and get this all stirred together and let this cook and warm up just for another couple of minutes and I'll come back and add the rest of the ingredients. Okay, so our seasoned hamburger meat as well as our corn and black beans are heated through and again, if you didn't pre-cook hamburger, of course you would just start with one and a half pounds of hamburger that you would cook and drain um, and before or while you're cooking it, you would add your one teaspoon of dried minced onion. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some salsa and sour cream. Okay, I'm adding about half a cup of salsa. Again, this is sort of like you can add what you like. If you want a little bit more, you can add more. I don't love a lot of tomatoes. I will also be serving sour cream and salsa on the side along with some black olives and chopped green onions, so you'll need those too. Um, and I'll show you that at the end. So I've mixed in my half cup of salsa. I might as well just finish this jar here, probably a little bit more, but not much more. So now I'm going to add about half a cup of sour cream, just to help it be a little bit creamier. And I've opened up my um, Las Palmas green chili enchilada sauce, and I'm gonna add about half the can here, making sure to save plenty to top this casserole with. So I'm gonna go ahead and stir this up. So this looks and smells delicious. It is all mixed together. Now I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this to my casserole dish. So here it is, all transferred to my um, sprayed casserole dish. And now I'm gonna just give it a thin topping of cheese, just like the last tater tot casserole. So probably about a cup or a cup and a half of cheese, however much you like, again. Just a nice thin layer to add a little cheesiness and to provide a nice barrier for the um, so the tater tots don't totally sink down into this one. So there we go and now it's time to top with tater tots just like we did on our last tater tot casserole. So I'm going to go ahead now and top this with tater tots and then we'll get that into a preheated 425 degree Fahrenheit oven. So my casserole is topped with tater tots and now I'm going to do a little bit of the enchilada sauce over the top. So I'm just going to kind of drizzle the enchilada sauce over the top of these tater tots here just to give it some delicious flavor. I love green enchilada sauce. It's very good. So we'll just kind of take that and spread it around. I'll probably use my spatula here, just kind of spread it around where it didn't get. Okay, so I'm gonna finish spreading that around a little bit and get this in the oven at 425 to cook until the tater tots are done, probably about 25 to 30 minutes. And also, while that is baking, I will clean up and chop some green onions and grab some sliced olives to serve on the top of this. Our taco tater tot casserole is all out of the oven. I left it in there for about half an hour just so that the tater tots would cook all the way through. You can see that the um, filling has kind of bubbled up above the tater tots. That is okay. If you wanted your tater tots to be a little crisper, you could just... Uh, pour more of the enchilada sauce in the hamburger mixture rather than topping it, but I think that this flavor should be pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this casserole cool down a bit. It literally just stopped bubbling, so it's very piping hot. And I have set out some um, toppings here, some of our favorite peach pineapple salsa. You just use regular salsa as well. Um, some sour cream, some chopped green onions, and sliced olives. So I'm gonna let this casserole cool down, and then I'll serve up some with all the toppings and show you what that looks like. Okay, so I have served up some of the casserole for myself, some of this delicious taco tater tot casserole. You could serve this with a side salad. I think that that would be really good, or some fresh fruit or something like that. Tonight I think I'm going to keep it simple with just a one dish meal with all the toppings here. I've added the green onions, the olives, and sour cream with some salsa on the side. So now I'm going to go ahead and give this a try and that has a really yummy flavor. Boy, I love the green enchilada sauce. It really adds a lot of flavor to this uh, taco tater tot casserole. All of the toppings are delicious. The black beans and corn are really nice in this casserole as well. I am looking forward to dinner tonight. So that is my second tater tot casserole, my taco tater tot casserole. Next, I'll be sharing with you a breakfast tater tot casserole. For our next tater tot casserole, we'll be making a breakfast tater tot casserole. So for this tater tot casserole, you will need a pound of sausage, 
ground sausage. You will need a red and green bell pepper and an onion, eight eggs, some olive oil to saute our veggies, some pan spray for our nine by 13 pan, about a half a cup of milk, of course tater tots, and some cheese. So I'm gonna start by chopping up all my veggies and getting them sauteing in some olive oil. Then we'll cook up our sausage and get started assembling our casserole. So I've got my onions and peppers all chopped up into the pan here. I drizzled a little bit of olive oil into the bottom of the pan. Now I'm gonna go ahead and saute these and give them a little bit of a jump start before I add the sausage. These take a little bit longer to cook than the sausage would and I don't really like um, undercooked bell peppers, so I wanna make sure to get those nice and sauteed. So I'm gonna go ahead and saute these until they're starting to get pretty soft, and then I'm gonna add the sausage. So I've got my heat on um, high. I'm turning it to medium now that it's heated up, and I'm just sauteing these around in my pan, again, until they soften up and start to cook through. The onions and peppers have got a nice start, and now I'm gonna go ahead and add my sausage here. Again, one pound of regular sausage. And now we'll just go ahead and chop this up and start cooking it into a little crumbles. Get that all cooked up and blended with the peppers and onions as well. And they'll continue cooking also. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all crumbled up and cooking, and I'll be back to show you the next step. The sausages, peppers, and onions are continuing to cook away, and they smell absolutely delicious. You'll just wanna make sure you keep moving them around with your spatula so nothing gets burned. So I'm gonna keep cooking these until the sausage is completely cooked through. My sausage, onion, and pepper mixture is all cooked. I've turned off the heat, and I'm gonna remove it from the heat while I go and mix up my milk and eggs. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put my eggs into this bowl here. I'm gonna crack eight eggs into here. So you'll need eight eggs here, and you'll need some salt and pepper to season it with and you'll need half a cup of milk that we'll be stirring in once we get the eggs in here and whisk them together. Okay, so my eight eggs are in the bowl here and I'm going to go ahead and whisk these up. So I set my camera down and switched to my right hand to get those all whisked together. And then I'm adding a half a cup of milk here. This is just whole milk. Then I'm gonna add salt and pepper to taste just how you would normally salt and pepper your eggs. So a little pepper and a little salt. I don't like to use too much salt in these eggs because the sausage has a lot of salt and so do the tater tots. So you wanna have an overly salty um, casserole here. Cheese also has salt, so yeah, you don't need to add too much salt. So just gonna go ahead and whisk that together and set it to the side. And then I'm gonna prepare my nine by 13 casserole dish and also my oven has been preheating to 400. So I'm gonna give my pan a spray here. Just making sure that all the sides and edges are covered. I'll probably go in and do that a little bit more thoroughly, but just so you get the idea. And now I'm gonna go ahead and transfer my sausage and pepper mixture to the bottom of the casserole dish. I'm also gonna be sure and use a slotted spoon and be sure and drain off any excess fat that happens to be in this sausage here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that sausage transferred to my dish here. So I have spread out my sausage, pepper, and onion mixture into the bottom of my sprayed nine by 13 casserole dish. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pour the eggs over the top of this mixture nice and evenly. So just like so, just making sure to kinda of evenly pour the egg mixture over the top of the um, sausage and peppers and onions. And then using my flat spatula, I'm just gonna make sure I kinda even this all out here, just so we don't have a spot that doesn't have enough egg. You can also kinda just shimmy the casserole dish so it levels out. Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and top this with a, a thin layer of cheese. And you can add however much cheese your family would prefer. I like to make sure to add about a cup to two cups, just depending. I don't like it to be too heavily cheesy, but just enough to cover the top of the egg mixture here. Okay, so I've got that evenly topped with cheese there, and you can make sure to move the cheese around a little bit if you need to, to get it evened out. And now it's time to top this with tater tots, just like with all the rest of our tater tot casseroles. I'm gonna put tater tots all along the top here, 
in nice neat rows. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of my tater tots on the top of this casserole and I'll come back to show you what that looks like before I pop it into the oven. Okay, so here is my breakfast tater tot casserole all topped with the tater tots and ready to go in the oven. I'm gonna go ahead now and bake this at 400 for about 40 to 45 minutes. I'll keep my eye on it just in case it takes a little bit um, longer or if it goes a little quicker. I'm looking for the teeter tots to be golden brown and cooked through and for the egg mixture to be completely set up. So I'm going to get this in the oven and I'll come back when it's finished to show you how it turned out. So I've taken the teeter tot casserole out of the oven. The eggs have set up. You can kind of see here that they're nice and set up. You can see it's still sizzling hot. This took about 45 minutes to bake at 400 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool down just for a few minutes and then I'll plate up a serving and give this a try. So I have let my breakfast casserole sit for just about five minutes here. I was able to serve up a nice piece. It cuts really nicely. You can see that the egg has set up really nicely and the sausage and pepper and onion layer is in there and the tater tots are delicious and golden brown. This would be a really nice casserole to serve for a brunch. And now I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try. This looks pretty steamy hot, so I'm gonna make sure I cool it down a little bit before I take a bite. And that is really yummy, very delicious. I'm excited to serve this today for brunch for me and my husband. We'll have a lot of leftovers here. I will definitely be enjoying this tater tot breakfast casserole for breakfast throughout this week. And this is definitely one that I will enjoy making for different brunches and breakfasts that I serve. I think that this breakfast tater tot casserole would go wonderfully with some fruit and it would make a really nice breakfast. And next I'll share with you our fourth and final tater tot casserole our chicken pot pie tater tot casserole. And for our last tater tot casserole, I'll be making a chicken pot pie tater tot casserole. So I have here some pepper and parsley. I've got about a pound and a half of cooked and chopped up chicken here. You could also use chicken from a rotisserie chicken or any chicken that you have cooked up from perhaps leftover from a roasted chicken or anything like that. So about a cup and a half, um, you can increase that if you're serving a bigger family. But about a pound and a half of chicken there. And then a bag of mixed veggies. This is a 12 ounce bag. You'll need a can of cream of chicken soup. You'll need some milk and you'll need some cheese. I'm just using this Mexican style cheese. You can use any cheese blend or just cheddar cheese. Um, any shredded cheese that you have, like Cheddar Jack, something like that would work just fine. And then, of course, you'll need some tater tots. You'll also need a 9 by 13 baking dish, and I will spray the bottom of this with pan spray. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is mixing together my chicken, mixed veggies, and cream of chicken all in a bowl and then I'll come back and show you how much milk I add to that bowl. I have mixed together my chicken and my cream of chicken soup and my mixed veggies. Now I'm going to add about half of a can of milk here and you can always add more milk if it looks like you need a little bit more. Now I'm going to add a few dashes of pepper and another thing I forgot to mention, I'm going to be adding some chopped onion. This is like dried minced onion, chopped onion from Costco. I'm just going to add a bit of that, probably about a rounded teaspoon or so. It's however much onion you like. And then for a little bit of color, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of parsley flakes. Just like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and mix this all up and transfer it to my sprayed 9 by 13 baking pan. I've got that all mixed up and I'm going to add just a little bit more milk here. I think that's probably only about an eighth of a cup just to make it a little bit more moist. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get this mixed up and transfer it over to my baking can. And next, sprinkle a thin layer of cheese over the top of the mixture. And next, just like with all of our tater tot casseroles, we're going to top our tater tot casserole with tater tots. And I'll come back and show you what that looks like when it's all ready to go in the oven. And the oven, by the way, is preheating to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll be baking this at 400 until the tater tots are all the way cooked through and nice and golden brown. So I'm gonna go ahead now and top my casserole with tater tots. And here is my chicken pot pie tater tot casserole ready to go in the oven. So I'm gonna go ahead and cook this. It'll probably take at least half an hour. Sometimes it takes about half an hour to 40 minutes or so 
we just want to make sure that the tater tots are totally cooked through and that the casserole is hot and bubbly. So I'm going to go ahead and get this in my 400 degree oven and I'll be back to show you how it turned out. The casserole is out of the oven. It's bubbling and hot. This took around 40 minutes to bake at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to go ahead and let this cool for a little bit while I cook up some veggies to go alongside of it. And then I'll go ahead and give this chicken pot pie tater tot casserole a try. Okay, so my casserole has cooled down a little bit and it smells so good. I'm really excited to give this a try tonight. I think this is going to be a great dinner. You can see all of the veggies in there, the chicken with all of the delicious uh, creamy sauce from the soup mixture as well as the cheese and all of those delicious tater tots. And now I'm going to go ahead and give this a try. And that turned out delicious. All of the flavors of chicken pot pie but in a tater tot casserole. A nice and easy, fun casserole for dinner. This chicken pot pie tater tot casserole is wonderful. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at all four of my tater tot casserole recipes, and I hope that you give them a try. I would love to hear in the comments below if you have any tater tot casserole recipes that you think I should try as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.